That was amazing, Kira. Thank you. Beautiful. And Beverly, for your prayer response as well. Thank you. One more word of welcome, everyone here this morning. A special word of welcome to those of you watching our video online. And no matter when you happen to see this video, and for those of you here right now, I invite us all into this time of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, again today we offer our heartfelt thanks for the gift of Scripture and the difference it makes in our lives right now. Amen. The choir director had selected a six-year-old boy to help with the opening scene of the big musical production. Now all you have to do when I direct the choir to start singing and you hear the words, and the angel lit the candle is enter from the side and then light all the candles. I can do it, I can do it, the little boy said, excited to be the one picked. Well, rehearsals came and went, everything was good, and finally the big night arrived. The choir was in grand voice, the church was beautifully decorated with dozens of unlit candles all around the chancel area awaiting that moment when the littlest angel made his entrance. The director gave the downbeat, the orchestra began to play, and the choir swept into the introductory lines, ending with an expectant, and the angel lit the candle. Everyone looked toward the entrance. No little boy. The director gave the downbeat again and gestured for a louder line to which the choir sang, and the angel lit the candle, and again all eyes looked toward the entrance. Nothing happened. The little boy did not appear. Well, the director was beginning to sweat, motioned with great sweeping gestures, and the choir thundered into the line with the curtain swelling slightly from the sound, and the angel lit the candle. Absolute silence and no angel lighting any candles. And then after a few seconds came the clear boy soprano voice floating in from out of sight, and the angel dropped the candle into the toilet. (laughs) When I picked that story, I did not know Beverly's prayer response for this morning was going to be, go light your world. In fact, I picked that story because we can all relate to those times when things don't go as planned for us. Usually, our unexpected experiences are non-crucial events, meaning they are more of an inconvenience than anything else, but still, we don't like that feeling of having the apple cart upset. We can easily answer, and we do when someone asks, How are you doing with the words, all right, considering everything that has occurred? Or okay, under the circumstances. The Apostle Paul was a person who could relate to unexpected things happening, but he seldom, if ever, let that keep him from his purpose. As you probably know, Paul, first known as Saul, was a Jew educated in Greek culture and born a Roman citizen. He had made it his mission early on in his life to destroy the Christian church and went as far as dragging Christians from their homes so that they could be imprisoned. But after a dramatic conversion event on the road to Damascus, Saul would become Paul and would be the apostle who did so much to spread the Christian church religion. In fact, some believe, and I agree, Paul did more than anyone else up to that point, growing our religion. Yes, of course, Jesus got it all started, but Paul played a leading role in establishing a worldwide church all within 35 years of Jesus' death and resurrection. Through it all, he became an example and perhaps the most significant person of his time, 
showing Christians how to face persecution with courage and faith. He knew how to confront whatever it was he was facing. So what was Paul's secret? Well, he tells us in part in today's passage from 2 Corinthians, a letter to the church in Corinth that offers some of Paul's strongest and most appealing theological themes, including consolation, reconciliation, and God's constant presence with us in the midst of weakness. Paul knew the power of God's presence in his own life. Therefore, nothing on the outside was strong enough to crush him. With faith in the Lord, he went headfirst into whatever it was he was facing. You see, Paul was wise enough to know that challenges and opposition are a part of our human life. It seems to me that it's too easy for us to think in this 21st century that all, with all of our conveniences and advancements that life should always give us wind at our backs so we may float effortlessly through life riding on the clouds, if you will. I know I can sometimes think that I've paid my dues. They're all paid up. I shouldn't have to be paying any more dues at this point in my life. Well, that's simply wrong. There will always be dues to pay. We should be prepared to pay for them when necessary. One of the lessons of water safety is that when the current against us is strong, Instead of trying to swim against it, we should learn to swim across it. I read a story this week about a bird building its nest. Patiently and detailed, it worked on that project all day long. That night, a storm came, a common occurrence throughout parts of this country this year. So a storm hit this locale, and the next morning, that little bird's home lay on the ground in a pathetic ruin. The bird was there too. However, it was not crying over the destruction. It was busy rebuilding. The first words of M. Scott Peck's book, The Road Less Traveled, Our Life is difficult. And we all know it can be. People who confront that truth head on are people who go on to make major contributions. One example I read about this week would be the American folk artist Grandma Moses. Born Anna Mary Robertson, she worked as a hired girl on a farm. She met and married a hired hand on that farm. His name was Tom Moses. They moved to a farm of their own and had ten children. Five of those children lived past infancy. To make a long story short, Anna loved to do needlework, but as she became older, her hands were stiffened with arthritis. In her late 70s, it was becoming increasingly difficult for her to embroider, so she decided to try painting. She had enjoyed painting as a girl, but did not have the time to pursue it while raising her children and working on the farm. Now she found she could handle the paintbrush and had the time she began painting mostly farm and country scenes. One day an art collector passing through her small town saw her paintings in a drugstore. He bought several of them and the rest, as they say, is history. Grandma Moses painted over 1,500 popular paintings. She developed an international following. She was on the cover of Time magazine. She had an Oscar nominated documentary made about her life. President Truman presented her with a trophy for outstanding art accomplishment. President Kennedy memorialized her following her death in December of 1961. How could all that happen to her? Because her hands were stiffened with arthritis and she could no longer embroider. Yes, we know life can be difficult, and Paul was wise enough to understand that truth. He lived that truth. He also knew that by the grace of God, out of challenges come opportunity. 
There's a story that goes, uh, a salesperson was stuck on an elevator between floors. Nobody in the building knew he was stuck. Fortunately, if you can picture this, there was a telephone in the elevator, so the salesperson called the fire department to report his plight. While he was waiting for the fire department and an elevator service person to free him, the salesman decided to put his free time to use. He got back on that telephone. He called each of his accounts in that building, explaining what had happened, and started taking their orders by phone. By the time he was released, some two and a half hours later, he had finished all his business in that building and was on his way to the next building to see those appointments. That's a slightly dated but a definite example of how to deal with adversity. Paul could relate in his own way, in his own time. When he was shipwrecked or delayed in his journeys, he took the opportunity to witness to new people about Christ. He knew that God would use those encounters to cause faith to sprout up in unexpected places and unexpected ways. While in prison, Paul wrote some of our world's most important words. Paul knew just because he had been knocked off course, he was not without purpose. And friends, just so we're clear, this is not a sales motivational seminar this morning. This is all about the Bible, and finding opportunity with unexpected events is one of the themes we find in the gospel and throughout the Bible. Remember, as we talked about last week, understanding the Bible is not about picking verses to fit our beliefs, but it's about recognizing themes that stretch throughout the Bible and then finding how those themes matter with our lives and with our 21st century context. Certainly, one of the themes we find in the Bible is taking that which might appear useless and making it usable. Taking that which appears hopeless and making it hopeful. Taking that which has been defeated and making it victorious. When thinking about the Bible and the gospel, does any of that sound familiar? I hope so. If not, I would encourage you to think about Jesus on the cross and how that story does not end. You see, Paul discovered in all of his circumstances the unmeasurable strength of God. We are afflicted in every way, he wrote, but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Oh my, isn't that good news for our lives? I hope that's how you hear it. For the Spirit of God is working in our lives all the time. And because of that promise, friends, the Spirit of God working in our lives all the time, as Paul writes, we do not lose heart. Never ever lose heart. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, for your transformative ability, for changing the bad into good, the lost into the found, the hopeless into the hopeful, and defeat into victory, we pray today with deeply grateful hearts and for the life and the example of Paul. We offer you our thanks. Amen.